Okay, so uh, we're gonna start the material for test two, uh, and we'll get into that now. So uh, first, there's gonna be two parts of this. So gonna, the first slideshow, slideshow is is called uh, PowerPoint. It is called uh, organic compounds with oxygen. Uh, if you had a, have your book, uh, I, I'm not sure. But I think it's chapter twelve in the book. If you were to use the book, you don't have. Okay, uh, okay, so now the first test, uh, I did a little bit of hand holding with the worksheets, and um, uh, sorry, that's not going to happen anymore. Um, basically, what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to do a PowerPoint. Uh, this is exactly how I do it in class. Uh, and then I give, um, uh, then, then I give a, uh, Review and then the test. Now on a syllabus, I said I'll give you a worksheet. Uh, I will give you a worksheet and account for whatever 10 or 15 points. But basically, it's just going to be uh, a study guide um, th that and uh, it's to lead you along the way. Okay, um, you won't have to uh, do a lot of pro problem uh, practice problems like we did here. I mean, you had to do over the structures over and over and over until you got them right. It's, there's gonna be there's gonna be more memorizing in this and maybe and to also try to I mean it's not all about memorizing it's about trying to c connect the concepts and uh, the, the material into into a bigger concepts and um, so if you just memorize things without putting them in context then it's overall uh, it's really not doing you well so as you go through this try to look for context see how things are related to each other one of the things that I really t I try to connect is uh, what I always do is I connect things, find their similarities, and then um, then we separate separate them according to their differences. So uh, that'll be sort of a theme here. We'll talk about similarities, and then uh, and then we'll break off those similarities and difference. So you you have a big picture of what things look like. Uh, how they behave or whatever uh, and then there'll be classes of those into uh, into smaller groups not a lot smaller but it's this just not a bunch of memorizing things that have no connection okay keep that in mind so from now on there'll be uh, there will be a worksheet but there isn't going to be a big old uh, problem solving thing I mean you're just gonna have to study the uh, PowerPoints okay the first thing would be so this this first slideshow is going to introduce us to something called functional groups and functional groups are extra groups that are added to our hydrocarbon chain and there will be four of them that we will cover uh, and it's actually more than four so one, two, three, four, five. We'll cover four of them, but there's there's actually five. The first type of, uh, high, of functional group will contain oxygen, and there's three of those. There's hydroxyls, which we're covering for this test. Uh, carbonyls, which we'll all be also be covering for this test. Carboxyls, which we'll cover in uh, for the next test, test three, and also be that information will be used for test four. And you can see here that if we're going to talk about hydroxyls, we'll be talking about something called alcohol. Carbonyls, we'll be talking about something called aldehydes and ketones. And carboxyls will be related to things called carboxylic acid and esters. Um, nitrogens will also be found on functional groups as amines and amides. And those will be talked about for test 4 and test 5. And there's some functional groups that have sulfur in them which I call thiols okay and they're, these are very very important actually uh, they these turn out to be really life savers in terms of li uh, life chemicals but um, that would t that would be a whole new class of uh, types of molecules that I'd have to add on uh, onto this and we don't have time for that okay so so the first type of functional group we're going to co cover is something called the hydroxyl group. And what it is is that OH, okay, 
dash O A. All right, I'll leave the lone pairs off the O and H. Okay, and this is called a hydroxyl group. And sometimes you just can write it as O H. Okay, sometimes you'll just have a C and an O H. But whenever you see O H, that means you have a hydroxyl, not hydroxide. Okay, hydroxide looks quite similar. Hydroxide is O H minus. Um, but uh, so they're similar, but again, they're, it's uh, what's different is is that this actually attaches to a molecule. Okay, uh, and so the functional groups, uh, the main place we'll find this guy is in what we call alcohol. So alcohols are a type of molecule that specifically has hydroxyl functional group. Okay, so they'll have, um, and the general formula is of alcohols as R bond O bond H, okay, where R is represents some unspecified hydrocarbon chains. So this could be like five carbons, um, it could be alkene, alkane, alkyne, and whatever, it doesn't matter. So we just put this here just to show you that this is a carbon, all these are carbons attached out this way. Okay, so so we're not specifically going to talk about hydroxyls, so we're going to talk about alcohols. And a couple things that I want you to know about them is you're going to have to name them just like we named alkenes and alkanes. Uh, um, and we'll show how to do that. And also name some of the common alcohols and their uses and where they're found. Okay, before I go any further, we have to make sure that you guys uh, open up your brains and become self-aware to what's, what's chemistry is about. Okay, well, now the common world, like I say, the common speak, well, you'll, and this is what you guys talk about right now in your life, I'm sure, is that when you hear certain words, you automatically think certain things. And chemistry and let me go over this an angry man like me when I hear people just talking about salt as being flavoring in your food I go Ugh, it's more than that okay turns out that when a chemist talks about salt they talk about any ionic compound so so another name for a ionic compound to a chemist is the word salt. So it's more than just your, your table salt, which most of us think salt is. And salt, when we ask people, is salt good for you or bad for you? Usually they say it's bad for you. No, it's absolutely, you know, for ionic compounds around it, everywhere, okay? And, and they're good for you. Uh, that's the one thing I want you guys to understand about this class. I mean, about especially chemistry, biochemistry. There's, you'll hear terms and we automatically, the way that the media, and it's not not the media's fault, I'm not gonna call it fake news or anything like that, it's just the way they, they just don't understand it. Um, and uh, the sources need to be, you know, uh, get a little bit more education. It is uh, And there's prop people trying to make money off of things. Um, so when we talk about you know, when most people talk about salt, they think, oh, it's bad for you. It causes high blood pressure. Uh, no, okay. And, and they get, I mean, also, when people hear the word salt, they may think sodium. No, okay. <laughs> it's, that's the thing is, is that a, for chemists, salt means ionic compound. It's sodium chlorium, magnesium chloride, uh, lead, nitrate, uh, potassium, uh, permanganate, okay, all that stuff. All right, the other thing, so let me just go over a few more of these, and we'll talk more about them as we go in class. So when you guys hear the word sugar, well, most of us think, oh, that's bad for you, okay? And because you get it in sweets, it'll make you fat, all right? Well, to a chemist, and this is gonna be important, this test, when I say the word sugar, it we talk what first 
every kind of carbohydrate out there. Okay, it's just a generic term that chemists use for carbohydrates. All right, um, now when we say alcohol, the first thing that people come to mind is booze, okay? And um, yeah, alcohol is booze, booze is alcohol, but not all alcohol is booze, okay? And that's what, the, what makes an alcohol, an alcohol is it has that OH group in it, okay? So we're gonna see different kinds of alcohols in this class. But what makes the alcohol an alcohol is uh, the hydrox, hydroxyl group in it. So hopefully, you, you know, you're more educated now when you hear the alcohol, go, well, and if you're, your boyfriend, girlfriend say, well, let's go have some alcohol, you go, well, what kind of alcohol? Can we have, <laughs> you know, so, um, so, you know, it's the kind of thing, uh, you just, you got to be aware of what we're saying here. Again, we'll see with fat, when people say fat, it's more than just blubber. And then when we get finally get to protein, it's more than hamburger, okay? So, uh, so part of this class is to have you become more aware of the terms that science uses. Because if you're a nurse and they start talking about salt, you got to know they, they could be talking about potassium chloride, they could be talking about sodium chloride, uh, they could be talking about lac um, sodium lactate, they could be talking about all kinds of things. All right, just that was just a little head. Okay, so naming alcohols and also going the other way, coming up with the formulas. Uh, it's going to be very similar to then alkanes and alkenes. Uh, and actually, it's going to be kind of like alkenes. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the longest continuous chain. Okay, you can find the longest chain. Um, so if it's like five carbons, then it'll be pentane. But instead of ane, you're not going to use ane. You're going to use OL, so it'd be pentanol, and we'll do some examples. Um, okay, and the numbering is gonna make try to make that OH group on this uh, on the least no uh, smallest number of carbon. Okay, we'll go over that. It's, it's kind of like alkenes. You know, the alkene if it came off, you always want the alkene the like you said two pentene. Um, it could have been four pentene, uh, but two is smaller than four. Again, you can be, there's like methyl ethyls and all that. You'll name them, and then you'll number them according to where the hydroxyl was coming off. Then you put all the names together. Now, hopefully, you at least picked up on how to do the names and formulas from the last test, because that's going to apply for this test. And the next test, and yeah, so the lead next test, two tests, we're gonna, you're gonna be doing names and formulas like you did. Okay, so let's go over our first alcohol. So this is a one carbon alcohol. So uh, if you notice, it, it, it's kind of like methane. So methane is a carbon four hydrogens off on it. Um, this is a methane with one of the hydroxyls, hy hydrogens that, um, substituted with a hydroxyl. And this OH could go here, 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 or here. It doesn't matter, okay. So this, the name of this guy is methanol. It's often also, they might call this methyl, alcohol okay but um we call it methanol all right and then uh th then there's a two carbon uh two carbon alcohol instead of ethane it's ethanol 
and the OH could come off of either one of either this carbon or this one. If it came off this one, then this would be CH2. If it um and then, then this would be CH2. Okay, um now this is a three carbon chain with a hydroxyl coming off of it. So it's one, two, three. So it's a propanol. Okay, now we're going to see that it's important to tell which carbon it comes off of. Because we have the same thing down here. This is also a propanol, one, two, three. And it has, also has a hydroxyl off of it. But these two structures, these two chemicals are not the same. Okay, so what we have to do is tell where that hydroxyl comes off of. So this comes off of number one. If it comes off of one, just like any time we use one in chemistry and math, you can just leave it off so it just can be propanol. Um, but uh, this one is two propanol comes because it comes after the second carbon uh, going either way. And this OH could be on, on down in the bottom here, or it could be up here on the top. Okay, so that's how kind of how we're going to go with naming, and then we're going to do some more examples here. All right, uh, so take a look at this guy. Uh, let's name it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven, so this is the hepten all, okay? And which carbon does, I mean, which carbon? Carbons the uh, hydroxyl come off. So if you go left to right, it comes off one, two, three, four, five. And going right to left, it comes off a number three. And three is smaller than five, so we're going to go this way. Okay, so you can see it's kind of like doing alkenes. All right, so let's name this one. So the longest change is one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentanol, and uh, the hydroxyl comes off of the first carbon. And it has, so we're going to go this direction, right to left. And it has carbon coming off of number two and number four. So it's going to be 2,4-dimethyl, because there's two of them, one pentanol. Okay, now let's try this one. So this guy is one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a hexanol. Uh, the OH comes off a number three, which is uh, right to left. If you went from left to right, it come off number four. So it comes off a three, going left, right to left. And then it has the methyl coming off of one, two, three, four, five. 5-methyl-3-hexanol. Okay, another one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. So it's an octanol. Okay, the OH comes off in number 3 from the left. Uh, from the right, it comes after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going to go from the right left to right because it gives the smallest number three uh has methyl coming off of number three then it has a ethyl coming off of one one two three four five six six okay six ethyl three methyl three octanol so i don't think it's that difficult i mean uh once you understood the alkenes and alkanes how to number them um how to name them I mean um, it's you can see it's just basically the same thing uh, just have to be careful where determine where the hydroxyl and numbering the chain in the right way okay now there's another consideration we have is there's types of alcohols and that's doesn't mean like uh, whiskey gin beer okay <laughs> it's what it refers is to this this the structure of the alcohol all right so there's a primary alcohol which is symbolized by the roman number one i forgot to leave that put that on here i'll probably do that after the uh after i get done with this uh there's a secondary 
alcohol and a tertiary alcohol. A primary alcohol is you look at the carbon with the hydroxyl, hydroxyl and if it only has one carbon attached to it, then it's called primary, and you'll see an example of that. And then there's secondary, which uh, the carbon with the hydroxyl has two carbons. And then tertiary, where you have the carbon with the hydroxyl has three carbons attached to it. All right, I fixed the last slide. Uh, you can see that I have a primary use the Roman numeral one with the degree, uh, secondary Roman number two with the degree, and uh, tertiary three with the degree. Uh, we will to, you will hear primary, secondary, tertiary again in the future. Okay. So here's here's some kind of uh, this skeletal structure so so here's here's a carbon and it, and there's and it has um, all the only thing it has is uh, another carbon attached to it they should have put this out here so so it just has one more carbon attached to it so uh, these are H's okay so so this carbon just has one carbon attached so it's so it's a primary Okay, this carbon here, which has has the hydroxide, on it, has two carbons attached, and this carbon here that has the hydroxyl has three carbons attached. All right, so let's let's go over um, the ones we just did it, uh, previously. So we we did this one here, two four dimethyl one pentanol, and what I want to do is decide see what, what type it is. Okay. So let's just look at this carbon right here. And this carbon just has one carbon attached to it, so it's primary. Okay, the next uh, next one I have here okay, is this carbon here has a hydroxyl attached to it and it has two carbons attached to it. So this is secondary. All right. And then last one, this this carbon here attaches to the hydroxyl and it has one, two, three carbons. So it's tertiary. Now one thing you don't do is you don't put these in their names. So you don't say primary one two four. You just if I I'll just ask you what type I'll say what like I might ask you what is the name of this? Okay, and what type of alcohol is it? Okay, so let's go over some of the common alcohols that we've already talked about a little bit, but you may have heard of them. Uh, there's methanol. Okay, otherwise, other also known as methyl alcohol and wood alcohol. The reason why it's called wood, wood alcohol is, is that you can get it from distilling wood. Which, and uh, not a good idea. I mean, you can do it, but you don't use it um, to drink. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, what it does is it helps clean. Like if you if you're uh, working in a lab and you're trying to clean up some lab spills and things like that, it's a good cleaner. Um, don't drink it. Okay, and that, actually there is a problem with that because um, there are some when people make what alcohol like to drink ethanol which we'll talk about in a few minutes is uh sometimes they they add methanol to the to the ethanol and um and especially amateur distillers that are making like what is that uh, uh clear absolute or whatever um there they might be distilling it with some wood and the wood will have put some wood alcohol in it's called and then it can uh it can it contaminate your your alcohol and it actually could lead to death okay um uh, here's a weird thing okay uh just like we kind of heard that maybe drinking clorox was way of uh killing the coronavirus 
Uh, there was uh, some Middle Eastern countries that sort of were getting out bad information that drinking methanol would protect you from the corona and end up killing people. Okay. So not a good a good thing. All right. But methanol is practical in the right place. All right, ethanol. Okay, ethanol is booze. Okay. But when you hear ethanol, the thing you may have heard is gas stations. So if you go to the gas station, you'll see it says contains 85-10% uh, ethanol, all right? Well, it's the same stuff that you drink. Uh, it's absolutely true, okay? So don't, don't go to the gas station and start drinking the uh, ethanol um, because, uh, first of all, they put it, things in there that will make it um, bad for you. And... Uh, it's probably too pure anyway, so don't 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 even think about doing it. All right, um, so and we're gonna talk about uh, more about ethanol in a minute. So, so here's one of those common speaks is, is that people when they hear about ethanol, first thing they think about is like, especially around here. I'll ask my students, "Where have you heard of ethanol?" They go on, um, and for fuel. And the other people, well, it's from corn. Yeah, it is. It's both. But it's also the same stuff that's in your beer, wine, etc. that makes you drunk, okay? But it can power your car, but for different reasons, okay? So when ethanol get puts in your car, it gets combusted, <clears throat> um, turns into carbon dioxide and water. But when you put it in your body, uh, well, eventually it gets turned into carbon dioxide and water. But um, it goes through different pathways. It's also known as grain alcohol, which we'll talk about in a second. But here's uh, the formula, okay. It has two carbons, okay. All right, um, so ethanol is the alcohol found in alcoholic beverages. Uh, it is called grain alcohol because that's where you can get the ethanol from. You can get it from grain, which I'll talk about in a second. You can get it from fermentation. Okay, and we'll get into that. Uh, uses of ethanol include booze, you know, beer, wine, rum, whatever, okay, fuel, uh, and also you can help to clean things up with it. And we're going to talk about this in a second. Making beer or whatever. Okay, making booze. Okay, making booze is actually really easy, but the same process that we use in making beer, wine, uh, etc., is exactly the same way that these farm uh, people at uh, these ethanol plants are making ethanol from from corn. Exactly the same process, okay? Because they're producing ethanol. And what you do, and it's real simple, is you take glucose which I'll talk about where you find that in a second and we're going to talk about glucose uh, more in the next slideshow slide powerpoint is you mix it with yeast and yeast is a living organism it's kind of like us it's a singular singular single celled uh, eukaryote and what that means is it has uh, uh, organ um, organelles in it like a uh, mitochondria well it has a nucleus and and other sorted inner parts um and you, you when you put the glucose in with the yeast well it, the yeast sees the glucose as food and the yeast breathes oxygen like we do but it get diff obviously a different way and um and when it combines the glucose with oxygen it produces atp for energy and this is called uh, this process of energy is called aerobic metabolism and we'll talk about this more next in the next um, PowerPoint cellular respiration now this is no fun here this doesn't make alcohol but what you do is you shut the oxygen off so you like put a cap on on the container and then what happens is the yeast 
can undergo anaerobic metabolism. And what they can do is they can still make ATPs, but one of the byproducts of making ATPs when they do anaerobic is methanol. And that's where we get our ethanol from, is we shut down the oxygen from the yeast, okay, and what they do is they still live but one of the, by the products that they make is ethanol. Now we can do the same thing. This is if somebody were to shut down our oxygen just for a little bit. Uh, uh, we could do anaerobic as well, but we don't make ethanol. We make lactic acid. Okay. Um, we can do this with anything. Where do we get our glucose from? Okay. The glucose can come from a whole lot of different places. It come from grain like corn okay so that's the farmers around here are growing corn to sell to the ethanol factories okay barley okay is a kind of grain well that's what they make beer out of rice is a kind of grain and that's what they make sake out of okay wheat they, they could make wheat beers you could have fruits that have glucose in them and you like grapes and wine cherries wine apples cider uh, hard cider okay and then if you want to go then you could just take sugar itself or just plain old sugar and throw it in here and you could make a really kind of nasty stuff that you make in prison okay all right it's kind of fun Okay, uh, next is 2-propanol, which we talked about already. So, it's three carbons with the OH coming off of number two. Uh, you probably all heard of it. It's isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. And uh, here's some of the things it does. Don't drink it, though. It's an alcohol, but it's not, a, uh, it's not the alcohol that you drink. Okay. Is uh, ethanol. Okay, now last one, oh, it's kind of, really kind of important here. It's called glycerol. It's also, also known as glycerin. Fancy name, 1, 2, 3, propa, pro, pro, propane triol. We'll see why that is in a second. But um, glycerol is a lubricant, lubricant that's uh, used in lab. Uh, is, what, it, what it is, it's kind of this slippery it's like oil but it's not oil and it, and it's not sticky so it's it's a, a slippery substance and that's like the suppository but we're gonna see it has bigger use here so, so let's so this is it right here and we're gonna see it's really important especially when we get to fatty acids in the next uh, test three so uh, so it has three hydroxyls off of it and that's why it's called trial so it has so it's a propane it has three carbons and it has three hydroxyls now you don't have to name this okay so this is more complicated if you take organic chemistry you'll see how that works and here are some of the things again we're going to see it again when we get to uh test three Okay, ethers. Um, ethers, uh, don't want to spend a whole lot of time on them, but what makes them is, is that, so we had alcohols were like this. They were your carbon chain, oxygen, hydrogen. Okay, an ether what it does is it replaces this hydrogen with another the carbon chain. And the prime just means another carbon chain. Okay. So we're going to see this when we get to uh, aldehydes and ketones and also when we get to carboxylic acids and uh, esters in chapter 4. And we're just going to go over some naming and maybe one of... Um, <laughs> One or two of the ethers. It's just introduced you. We don't have. We're, all right. So 
there they are okay so they evaporate really quickly and, and they do have a real good use um, in the lab and I'm sh they do in living organisms, organisms as well but um, let's just go over it. the namings are really simple okay what you do is that you take your oxygen and then you name the groups attached to it so this is the oxygen with two methyls attached to it so it's dimethyl ether all right so here's another one so this is the ether and it has a methyl and an ethyl attached to it so this would be ethyl methyl ether okay and this one here here's your oxygen it has two ethyls coming off of it so it'd be diethyl and it's not okay diethyl uh, ether okay okay this guy up here is also known just as ether and you may have heard of ethers like um used to be used for as a, uh as a, put you sleep for operation uh or you can use this starting fuel okay so if you get starting fluid so if you could, your car doesn't start your tractor doesn't start you can go buy something called starting fluid and um and it's ether uh if you do use starting fuel fluid for your car tractor or whatever uh evaporates really quickly so when you put it in your carburetor uh you have to use it up real quickly otherwise it'll um go away so that that's it with ethers well i guess there's one here and that sort of tells you sorry i got the wrong guy so this is uh sorry diethyl ether is otherwise known as ether not the dimethyl all right so there you go all right next thing that's really big deal so really the big deal is alcohols and now the big deal is aldehydes and aldehydes have this thing right here which is a functional group called a carbonyl like carbon And then kneel, like kneel to the flag or kneel, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to do with it. Okay, kneel to the lords of chemistry. Okay, um, that's what it sounds like. All right, so, so this guy, aldehydes have carbonyl, but the other thing that they have is they have an H attached to it. So an aldehyde is a carbonyl with an H at the end. And we're going to go over some naming. So again, what you got to do is find the longest chain. Uh, and what we're going to do is instead of using AIN and instead of using OL, we're going to use AL. Okay. Uh, now the numbering is really simple. It always starts at the end where uh, the carbonyl is. Okay, so you, so uh, so you just look at where the carbonyl is, and it tells you where it is. And you name the alkyls and put everything together. So let's do fun. Okay, so oh, okay, let's take a look at this guy right here. So this is a one carbon uh, aldehyde. And seems like you should call it methan ale because it's one carbon methan ale, just like I said on the previous slide. Well, we don't call it methan ale, we call it formaldehyde. That's because we named it way before we came up with the method of um, we knew its structure. Okay, uh, now some curious is that you will see this again when we talk about. A carboxylic acids so it's form aldehyde okay have you probably heard of it it's uh it's a preservative okay you keep dead bodies from 
decomposing with it. Uh, and then you have the two carbon. You might think its name is ethanol, but it has a common name which is called acet aldehyde. And we're going to see that this is um, uh, this is important as well. So you have to know these two. Okay. Right. So let's go over. To, uh, um, so, so let's take this structure and name it. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So it's penten al. Right. Because here's what makes it an aldehyde. Okay. We start numbering from this end right here. So it's one. So it has a methyl coming off of number two, three, four, two, four dimethyl pentanal. Okay. All right. How about naming this guy? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a heptanal. We start numbering down here. By the way, this this could be over on this end, as, on the left end as well, or it could be on the top or on the bottom, sideways or whatever. Okay, I just drew it out here, um, on the right. So uh, it has a methyl, me, a methyl coming off of number one, two, three, four. And it has an ethyl coming off of number five, so it's five ethyl, four methyl heptanol. Okay, next thing is ketones. Okay, you may have heard of ketones before, all right? Uh, ketones have this structure here. Now, it's, it's very similar to aldehydes. Aldehydes have a carbonyl, okay? Has a carbon chain on it, a carbon, and then it ends with an H. Okay. On a ketone, so this is aldehyde. Aldehyde. Um, it has an H. A ketone replaces an H with another carbon chain. Okay, just like an ether. Uh, replaces uh, the hydrogen with another carbon chain. All right, ketones, you've heard about them like in terms of diet and things like that. Ketones are a byproduct of fat metabolism. Uh, when you're, uh, if you st are starving, uh, and I may talk about this more in the next slideshow, is that when you, when you starve, what happens to your body is um, your body breaks down in fat and a byproduct is of breaking down fat are ketones and ketones have a very distinct smell to them they're kind of sweet smelling uh, so you could if you know anybody if you've seen anybody that's been starved or what's been starving uh, you can kind of tell that they have been just by smelling them turns out diabetics can have the same thing because essentially diabetics uh, are being starved if they can't get their insulin and people that are on keto diets are essentially starving themselves and they're producing ketones as well uh, so you heard about key keto di uh, keto diets is, and basically what people are doing are just starving themselves by eating foods that are high mm -hmm. in fat um, and it's complicated but uh, basically starving themselves okay um, so but anyways that's just a side you don't have to do anything with that and test all right so let's go over some naming so these will end and own uh, and you can you're gonna find the longest chain and kind of like alcohols is you're gonna number it according to finding the lowest uh, number for the where the carbonyl comes off of. 
So this guy here is one, two, three, four. So it's butanone. If you will, from left to right, it comes off in number two. If you go from right to left, it comes off in number three. So two is smaller than three, well, so it's going to be two brutinone. So let's go over a couple other ones to name. And I'm leaving the hydrogens off of uh, the structures here. So this guy has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's heptanone. And what I want to do is I'm going to number it according to it gives me the smallest number for the, the carbonyl. The carbonyl from left to right gets, comes off number three um, from right to the left it comes off of number five so three is smaller than five so I'm gonna go left to right so it's three heptanone it all has an ethyl coming off number four then so it's four ethyl three heptanone okay let's talk about some chemistry right now we just been talking about names and formulas and all that but um, let's talk about some what happens. And what we're going to do is talk about oxidation uh, of primary alcohol to aldehyde. Now, oxidation, I don't know. If you've had me from chemistry, I really spent quite a, big, a lot of time on this. But there's something called oxidation, and there's its opposite called reduction. Okay, oxidation is when a substance will lose electrons. Reduction is when a substance will gain electrons. And it turns out that these two processes will always take place in chemistry. Um, every chemical reaction has, takes this, these two processes take place. <coughs> so, uh, oxidation means losing two electrons. Well, it turns out in biology, um, when something gets oxidized, it gets oxidized for a couple of reasons. One, it loses hydrogens, which when something loses hydrogens, it loses electrons because hydrogens have electrons. Or it gets oxidized because it gains oxygen. So we're going to talk about the first case where a substance loses hydrogens. So, we're going to take ethanol, and uh, what it can do is it can undergo oxidation. And so, so here's the carbon, and it's a primary, because it has only one carbon attached to it. And what happens is hydrogen, the other carbon, and of the oxygen, they will come off as H2. It could have been this hydrogen as well. It doesn't matter, but I picked this one. So it had, you have to get off two hydrogen. And then when you get done, notice what you get. You get yourself an aldehyde. And look at that aldehyde you get. It's a two carbon aldehyde called acid aldehyde. So primary alcohols can be re oxidized to uh, aldehydes. Now this, this reaction here is actually pretty important in terms of uh, our basic living, okay, whenever you have some alcohol to drink, ethanol, that's what you do when you drink alcohol, like beer or wine, is your body will break down the ethanol that you drink into acetaldehyde. Al acetaldehyde, and that takes place in your liver. And it turns out, and then there's one more step which we should talk about for next test, turns out that the accumulation of this this material right here acid aldehyde um, in your blood is actually the thing that gives you hangovers and, and all that stuff so acid aldehyde is really the nasty stuff of hangovers and actually some people think it's, it causes alcoholism um, and it's, it's in all, all kinds of interesting stuff with this so uh, so would you if you have a hangover what you would like to do is get rid of this chemical and there's ways actually you can do that uh, it's kind of cool all right 
so you can ox and it just this could be any primary alcohol it just doesn't have to be ethanol it could be one propanol so if you had a three like if you had three carbon Okay, this is one propanol. Okay, and it undergoes oxidation where uh, this oxygen out here and this oxygen goes, and then you would end up with this guy here, which would be uh, propanol. Okay, so any primary alcohol can be oxidized to an aldehyde. All right, how about a secondary alcohol? So here we go. We have set, here's a secondary alcohol. This is a two propanol or uh, rubbing alcohol. So this carbon here has two carbons attached to it. And here's the hydroxyl and the OH. Uh, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna lose this H and lose this H and uh, it comes off. So it gets oxidized. And then what you end up with this. Notice now is that we have a ketone. <clears throat> so when you oxidize a secondary alcohol, it becomes a ketone. Uh, how about tertiary alcohols? This guy right here. Okay. Um, the problem with this one is that you need to have two hydrogens come off to be oxidized. Well, this there's there's only one hydrogen so it cannot be oxidized so uh, there is no product in this case all right and then finally well I don't know so it's not finally but so let's take a look at oxidation of glycerol so glycerol we talk about it's three carbons and each there's each carbon has a, a hydroxyl and what we want to do is just oxidize the the top or the bottom uh, uh, carbon because these guys are primaries okay so this carbon here has only one carbon attached to it so it's a primary so that means what it's going to do is form an aldehyde so these two hydrogens come off and then what you end up with is this guy right here okay and this guy is named glyceraldehyde we can redraw it like this. You can you can have the O coming off the top here, and the H over here it really doesn't matter. And you end up with this structure, same thing. So both of these are called glyceraldehyde. And we're going to see that this is a really important structure, especially what we're going to get into next. All right, so let's look at glyceraldehyde a little bit. Whoops. Um kind of carry away with the pen here. So its formula is C3, has three carbons, has six car six hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three oxygens. Okay, this is actually be kind of important here. So this is the chemical, this is called the molecular formula. And a molecular formula tells you the exact number of atoms and molecule atoms and type of atom in a molecule. Okay. The empirical formula for this guy is is uh, the simple, or I mean the uh, whole number, simple whole number ratio. So uh, if you see that each one of these can be divided by three, the simple number ratio for this is so this is called the empirical or simple formula of glyceraldehyde the molecular formula gives you more information it tells you exactly why the empirical formula tells you relative now the other thing about it is we're going to which will seen us uh, uh, a little bit is it has more than one hydroxyl so it's poly which means many many hydroxyl and it's an aldehyde so it's a polyhydroxyl aldehyde 
Okay, and so it turns out that these two things, a molecule that has many hydroxyl, many hydroxyls, and our aldehyde or a ketone, and has this formula are carbohydrates. Do, do, do. And that's what we're going to end up talking about now. Okay, so uh, to the next slideshow, our uh, slideshow PowerPoint um, is going to uh, start u use carbonyls and uh, aldehydes, ketones, and alcohols and apply them now to our new, our first mono, I mean our first macromolecule carbohydrates. Okay, on to the next one.